Hello everyone and welcome to another Coral Island video. I am so excited to play more of this beautiful game and I hope you are too. Also thank you so much for the support on the previous 100 days video, I really appreciate it. Well, let's get right to it. I have two simple goals for year 2. First I want to reach town rank A. That might not seem like a lot since we're already at rank B, but trust me it's gonna take a lot of grinding to get to the next one. This unlocks underwater ranching and farming which brings me to the second point. I want to have a full underwater barn with at least one of the new animals. That means a murmu, sea shroud, carrot poultry, incog and a shell lark. That's about it. Before we start, I want to mention quickly, these videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so I would really appreciate if you would leave a like, it helps me out a lot, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel for future 100 days content. Without further ado, grab a snack, some water, and enjoy the video. It is the first day of year 2. As always, I cleaned up any debris that spawned on the farm, let my animals outside, and realized there is no grass for them to eat. Luckily I did have a few grass starters, but I need to remember to buy more. I collected my very first geisha coffee bean, did some quick maths to figure out how many seeds I can plant on the field, then headed into town to buy said seeds. Mostly strawberries, but also sugarcane, peas, poppy, soybeans and chard, which used up all my money. I had enough fertilizers for the strawberries, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the most profitable crop in spring. I learned that the peas grow on trellis, which is a bit odd, but then again I don't know much about in real life farming. After planting everything, I remembered that I still have those fairy rose seeds which I bought last fall, so I put those into the greenhouse. I gave Sam a snowdrop for an errand he posted today, then had a look at the altars again. The day insect offering is missing a tiger beetle and you come off, and both of these spawn during spring, so that'll be something I'll be prioritizing. And I actually saw the first moth about 3 minutes later while walking around town, but I was a bit too slow to catch it. I had a chat with Paul, who found some interesting tracks around his house and believes that these belong to a wooded bighorn, a mythical creature, half deer, half beaver, that walks on two feet and apparently loves to play chess. That sounds terrifying. Nobody has ever seen this thing before, but Paul firmly believes that it exists and is here on the island. Let's hope he's wrong. Shortly after, I found the tiger beetle and a bit later by the beach, I spotted another yucca moth and catched it successfully. I rushed back to the temple, donated the two critters and that's another offering completed, which gave me a free bee house as a reward. In the evening, I placed a widow spider into the empty insect house since I don't really have anything better right now. Next morning, I commissioned a mill from the carpenter, which I placed next to the shed. I'll need that for cooking later. I stopped by the general store to buy more seeds and also grass starters since they are very cheap and I of course want my animals to be happy. Donated three new items to the museum and learned that Scott likes dinosaur fossils. Might even be a loved item, but I forgot to check. I had a look at the ocean critter collection and there is one that I can catch right now actually, which is the chambered nautilus. Since traps worked really well last time, I picked up all the ones I had and made my way over to the Empapuru and placed them around the area. This critter only spawns in one specific spot and I don't really want to miss him since this guy only appears during spring. After that I visited the tavern where I purchased one zerabi which I offered to the rare cooking bundle along with the pot dye I bought from the new year's festival. On my way back I stopped by the taco stall and I was delighted to see a vegan taco which I also bought and donated to the temple. Now I'm only missing one essendor for the rare cooking bundle. Since I didn't really have anything else to do I went diving again and to my surprise found the chambered nautilus. That was really lucky. I remember when I played last time, it took me quite a few days to get one. So if anyone is struggling with this, here is the exact location on the map. On day 115 it was raining, that is my cue to go fishing. First at the lake, and I love that the flamingos are pink now, that's a nice little detail. I caught two gator gars and I was trying to get a snake hat as well, but I had no luck with that. But a bit later by the estuary I caught a frogfish. The item description reads, not the prettiest fish. Uh, excuse you? This guy is adorable. Don't listen to them, you're beautiful. That's all the new fish that I can catch right now. So after that I went into the deep woods to collect more hardwood and also found a magnolia green jumper. After going to bed I reached level 8 in fishing. With that I unlocked the lucky angler perk where I have a 3% chance to instantly pull in a fish. I checked my mailbox where I got a free fish pond from Sunny and also some coffee from Raj, which is perfect since this is a loved item for Yoko and it's his birthday today. I saw that the mill was finished, chopped down a few trees on my farm, placed the fish pond next to the silo, moved the insect house, gave Yoko the coffee, 
and went down to the beach where I upgraded my fishing rod to osmium quality. Back at the farm I crafted another 4 aging barrels and as I wanted to donate more stuff to the museum, I saw that there was a new menu, the collection rewards, which gave me a free hat for finishing the wind gem collection. As you can see we're pretty close to finishing quite a few of these. The hat is cute, but not really my style. Also the museum is at rank B now. I learned that I can place the geisha beans into a keg, which turns them into geisha coffee. Don't know why I didn't think about this earlier. I went back to the deep forest to cut more trees and later bought a plum, rampotan and lychee seedling from the store, since I'm still missing a few different kinds of fruit for an offering. On day 117 I crafted three more tappers for the tree farm, checked the merfolk calendar and thank god I did. It is Samuro's birthday and I cannot miss that. I picked up the last osmium quality barley beer I had, and he left it. Unfortunately, he couldn't remember my name, but that's okay. Boom, five hearts already. It's too easy. While I was at the kingdom, I noticed that I still haven't met all of the people, so I looked around and got acquainted to Orlan, the royal chef I assume. I mean, he looks like a chef. And also Toady, looking spiffy with that shell hat. I don't think I mentioned this before, but I absolutely love all of the different portraits in this game, especially the ones from the merfolk. I spend most of the day in the caves, mainly looking for ore and coal, but also to work on my combat level, which is currently still only at level 6. The next morning I had my first sugarcane and chard harvest. My fish pond was ready and I put in a gator gar. I upgraded my hoe to osmium quality, processed the geodes I found yesterday, which gave me one new artifact to donate. Bought once again more seeds at the general store, caught a second yucca moth for the museum, and that's about it. As I was checking my artisan goods the following day, I saw that the kimchi was finally done. I tested out the mill for the first time to make rice flour, and I believe that's also the only time I ever use it. I gave Antonio and Paul a birthday present, commissioned a gold quality upgrade for my seedlings at the lab, opened some fossil notes I've been hoarding so far, and we're looking pretty good on the fossil donations, only 16 missing. I spent a few in-game hours gathering osmium kelp, and while running around the farm later, I heard those weird orangutan noises again. So I headed over to the deep forest and on my way found a hickory horned devil. I came with bananas this time, since I thought maybe he was just hungry. I mean, I make weird sounds sometimes when I'm hungry. But no, I still cannot interact with him. It was worth a try, I guess. Day 120, I went to Raj Coffee Corner to meet up with the princess, Samaru and Tenali to continue our starlight expedition. And they do indeed have seasonal outfits. First we visited the giant's village, where we had a little party, which was a bit awkward for me since I record without music on. Next stop was the hot springs. The trip to the giant's village was very long, so this was perfect to relax our sore muscles. And that's another expedition done. For the next one I'll have to wait until summer. After that I picked up my new osmium fishing rod, stocked up on bait while I was there, saw that one of my luwaks dropped a large geisha coffee bean, which is something I need for another offering. I tested out my new rod and fished at the ocean forest, where I caught a monkfish. This is a legendary fish, so I caught another one, since this might be something for a future pond. By the lookout I got my hands on a jellyfish, and in the evening finished both the rare artisan and ranching temple offering. This immediately prompted another cutscene with the goddess. She thanked me once again for my various donations, and in return she formed a giant wooden bridge over at the hill where I was so confused on what to do in the last episode. This bridge finally unlocks the savanna area, and oh boy am I excited to explore that. For finishing the two offerings, I got a free auto pattern and aging barrel. Full of excitement, I went to bed shortly after, and saw that the aged coffee sells for almost 4000 gold. I need to get myself more luaks. Before exploring the new area, I had one important thing to take care of. Remember that farm computer I was talking about ages ago? Yeah, I finally remembered to buy it. <laughs> Along with the fishing component, crafting recipe. I didn't know too much about the computer, only that it can display seasonal fish and critters. So I was very surprised when I saw there's a whole online shop as well. I can see every single shop on the island and even buy clothing or furniture. That was so worth the money. I packed up a few snacks and finally headed over to the savannah. The chieftain and other giants also came along. The chieftain mentioned that Gort is inside this giant cave, so that will be our destination. I unlocked a new fast travel location, which is very convenient and at the front was a flower teleporter, which kind of reminded me about Dark Souls. After processing what just happened to me, right away I found a so-called treasure bubble. I don't know what to do with this yet, but I'll figure it out very soon. This place is absolutely massive. There's also lots of grass around, which is gonna be very nice whenever I run out of hay for my animals. 
I ventured further and came across some new animals. Ostriches and... water buffaloes, maybe? It says ranch on the sign, but there was no one else here, so I'll come back to that a bit later. I explored the area and finally reached the cave, but there was a giant branch blocking the way in. It wouldn't even let me go close. I was visibly confused about this, since I thought this was kind of like the whole point about unlocking the savanna, so that I can find the last giant. I had to google this, and unfortunately I couldn't really find a straight answer, but my guess is that I have to finish more offerings. I went back to the lake temple, and sure enough it says at the bottom of the advanced altar, unlocks cave of memories. Thank god I purchased those fruit seedlings earlier. I bought a ceramic bowl from Socket and Pan, and with that made one Essendor, the last item I needed for the rare cooking altar. Even got an achievement for that. I gave Kenny a soybean for his birthday, then didn't really know what else to do, so I decided to spend the remaining day in the mines to look for more ore. 122 was the day of the Cherry Blossom Festival. As always I chatted with everyone, also loved that the princess is attending the event, and this time I thankfully didn't forget about the potluck soup. I brought a gold quality pumpkin with me and hoped that this would be a good addition. And Judge Rose thought it was delicious. Mission accomplished. The next morning I had my first big strawberry harvest, and also my durian tree was done growing. Now I'm only missing one more fruit for the advanced altar. I upgraded my sapling quality at the lab, also bought the catching component for the computer, waited for the blacksmith to open where I picked up my new hoe, and commissioned an osmium watering can. I had to run back though because I keep forgetting that the watering can needs resin for some reason. I gifted Semaru some strawberry wine since I'm out of beer, and then ran around chopping trees, collecting more ore, and by the end of the day reached level 9 in foraging. I had a look at my farm computer the next day and noticed that these little icons indicate if you've already donated an item or not. Super handy. I need to get myself a snake hat, so I went over to the lake and fished one up shortly after. First try actually. I commissioned a third house upgrade from the carpenter, I gifted Scott and Oliver a birthday present, visited the Merfolk Kingdom. I forgot what I was doing here, but as I approached the Naga Palace, I had a cutscene with Deno and Agung, who were talking about someone called Poseidon. I asked if Poseidon left Semaru, not even knowing the context of the conversation, and shortly after I saw Semaru himself and explained to me that Poseidon is actually a lobster, a pet lobster to be precise, who went missing a while ago. I helped looking for him, but unfortunately we couldn't find him. Later in the evening, I took a few artifacts and gems over to the giant's village and enchanted my pickaxe, which now has 120% chance to drop rare items. This should help quite a bit when looking for geodes and fossil notes. Day 125 came around and I saw that my fruit seedlings were done growing, which gave me the last fruit to finish the advanced altar. This rewarded me with a free sprinkler, but more importantly, it unlocks the cave of memories. I opened a few coffers and geodes at the blacksmith, which gave me one azurite, and thus completing the water gem collection. I enchanted my scythe with the spare artifacts that I've got, and then spent the entire day grinding in the underwater caves. I'm specifically looking for ornate, regular, shimmering and mysterious coffers, and by the end of the day I was very happy with the loot that I've got. I even got a few fossil notes. Right now I can only get coffers from the underwater caves, but that'll change very soon. After going to bed, I reached level 9 in ranching and also saw the roots disappearing in front of the cave. You know exactly what I did today. In case you don't, I went over to the savanna and I was finally allowed to enter the cave. Inside was the chieftain and I also saw Gord floating in the air. The chieftain explained that in order to help Gord, I need to save his soul. This turned dark very fast. The other giants gave me their blessing to venture into the scary new cave system. Also, Star Wars reference. Best game. My quest log got updated after the cutscene, and I have to find 5 memory fragments, which I suppose are hidden inside the cave. Upon interacting with the entrance, I saw that I can even get special loot down there, like mystery coffers and mushroom trees. Pretty cool. So down I went. The levels look pretty similar to the regular mines, except a few mushrooms here and there. Or at least that's what I thought. Shortly after, I found my very first mushroom tree. Was happy to see that they also drop hardwood. And I can also find all types of coffers in here, which is amazing. I had to return after reaching floor 20 because I had no space left to pick anything up. I didn't find any memory fragments, however I did find an osmium quality cactus, which I donated to the rare crops bundle. I opened the fossil notes at the lab, donated the new items, planted the mushroom trees I found, and lastly crafted more preserve jars and kegs. The shed is coming along really nicely. Day 127, I woke up in a bigger house, which has a second floor now. 
I collected all the geodes and coffers I found yesterday, visited the blacksmith where I picked up my new watering can, and with that we have every single tool upgraded to osmium quality. It took me a few trips back and forth to open all of the coffers, but it was well worth it. This gave me 6 new artifacts to donate. I commissioned a second pond from the carpenter. If you've seen my starty videos, you know I love my fish ponds. I don't care if they don't make any money, they look cute. Then went over to socket and pan because I want to decorate my house finally. It's been an eyesore for way too long. I don't have a lot of money to spend unfortunately, but I bought a few things, went back home and started the process. I was very happy with how the bedroom turned out. I even have a really fancy gaming setup. Day 128 was spent in the savannah cave. I found new mushroom trees, even mushroom furniture, giant crops, lots of geos and coffers, but I only made it to floor 17. At this point, I unfortunately didn't know that there's actually a checkpoint at every 25th level. Next morning, I bought myself two more Luwaks named Nemo and Crush, because that geisha coffee sells for a good chunk of money, and I like having money. I gave Ling a birthday present, then went yet again to the Cave of Memories, though this time I came a bit better prepared, with dynamite and rope. And after a little while, I made it to floor 25. Like I said before, I now have my first checkpoint down here, and also found my first wellness fruit. This increases my health a little bit more. Not that I need it, since I don't really care about the mobs here. As expected, I also found my first memory fragment. This showed me a memory of Gord, where the giants were all together in the forest. Gord was performing his magic, and Grog complimented him on the trick. Gord didn't appreciate the comment though. That was interesting, I guess. I still had some time left today, so I headed over to the blacksmith, opened the insane amount of geos and coffers, which only gave me two new items to donate, but at least I could finish another collection, which was for finding all of the earth gems. Later I saw that the pond construction were done, and I put in the spare monkfish that I had. On day 130, I finally decided what I want to do with my greenhouse. It's been empty for almost two seasons, well besides the few fairy roses I had in there. And I want to plant fruit seedlings. Fruit seedlings will wither once they're out of season, so I thought this would be a neat idea. Since the game is so new, it's really hard to find any pictures of other people's greenhouse design, so I spent the whole morning figuring out where I want to have the seedlings. And I also tried to put fruit trees in here, but I don't think that's possible right now. As far as I'm aware, there's 11 seedlings in total. I bought the ones that were currently available to me, planted them with some fertilizer, and what I do with the rest of the space, I haven't decided on that yet. After I was done, I gave Mark a birthday present, upgraded my seed quality to osmium, and in the evening I was checking my farm computer, and I saw that I have yet to catch a yellow mora eel. Very important that I get this done, since I need one for the museum and also for an offering. So after 6 I went down to the beach and thankfully managed to catch two of them. The following morning I received a letter from Samaru who thanked me for helping him earlier and that he is planning to look further for Poseidon, in hopes of finding him. I made my way over to the kingdom, where I met up with him to continue our search. We looked near the shallow waters this time, but still no luck. Samaru mentioned that Poseidon actually has a very vibrant blue color. That would have been good to know before we start looking, and also, I hope it's not one of those blue lobsters I catched a while ago with my traps. That would be embarrassing. I told him that we should probably check the lands, since we haven't done that yet, and then the cutscene suddenly ended. <laughs> if it's not obvious by now, I'm going to romance Samuro, because that's what you guys voted for. And it wasn't even a close vote. I thought Mark would be way higher up, but I see we have a thing for guys with white hair. As do I, of course. I spent the morning looking for osmium kelp, then went back to the savannah cave, where I found so many giant crops. Like, look at that. Made it all the way down to floor 50, where I got another wellness fruit and a second memory fragment, this time showing Gord putting a spell on the houses for the monkeys to strengthen their homes. That's oddly nice of you. Gong showed up as well, who wanted to help Gord with the spell, but him being a water giant, he accidentally destroyed the structures. Gord was pretty mad about that, like I mean, really, dude was pissed. Even though Gong apologized immediately, Gord just ran off like a child. Okay? On my way back home, I stopped by the treasure bubble and I learned that by putting in any crops, I can receive random furniture pieces. And I got a tree stump, small white mushroom and large yellow mushroom. 132 was spent mostly fishing. At the forest river, I caught a giant stingray, another legendary fish, I crafted six more cakes for the shed, and that's about it. Day 133 was the tree planting festival. 
and I was excited about that. We had more people joining us this time, and the purple woods already look so much greener. Same as last year, I was tasked to clear out another area, tilled the soil, and planted the tree saplings. When I arrived back home, I got a recipe from Kira for spider tempura? Ew. Thanks, I guess. You might be wondering, Sav, you have all that money, why don't you spend it? Well, fret not, that's what I'm going to do today. Before doing that, I handed Samuru some wine, gave Ben and Alaya a birthday present, learned that I can change the design of the shed, as well as the mill, very cute, commissioned a second insect house, then spent most of my day moving a few farm buildings around, and finally also started to decorate outside. One nice detail, when you're in the architect mode, all your animals are automatically inside their buildings. I went to Socket and Pan to look at the outdoor furniture items, and by the end of the day, it looked like this. Yeah, it doesn't look great right now, but it's a work in progress, trust me. And on 135, I was still decorating all day. I also moved my machines a bit since I plan to relocate my chest, and it's coming along pretty nicely. The following day, I commissioned a second coop. I bought two more pigs named Baruigi and Warrior, saw that I had very little wood left, so I went on a deforestation spree around town, chopping down every tree that I saw. While doing that, I got a cutscene with Paul, who is on the hunt for the wooded bighorn. He placed a trap inside those bushes up ahead, but only managed to catch a chipmunk. Maybe next time, buddy. I spent a good chunk of my day in the savannah cave once again. Nothing major to report, though I did make it to floor 75, found another wellness fruit and a third memory fragment. We see Gord tending to a huge fire near the village, even burning the surroundings. Rue mentioned that the fire grew wild. Agreed, by the way, the thing was huge. And Gord just said that he was controlling it, but didn't start it. So both Gord and Giu are fire giants, it seems. And shortly after, Gord casually threatens with arson. Okay, Disney villain. Once again, I stopped by the treasure bubble, and this time I got a mushroom gazebo, which is humongous, by the way. Next morning, I handed Macy a birthday present, upgraded my sapling quality, of course also opened a few fossil notes while at the lab. Now we're only missing three more fossils to finish that collection. So close, yet so far away. Finally remembered that I can move machines instantly and pretty much anything else with the architect test and started to work on a new chest area. It's been bugging me for so long, they're kinda just right next to the house and it doesn't look very good. While I was moving everything around, I saw that I can buy scrap really cheap from the online shop, which is very handy since scrap is used for quite a lot of artisan machines. This took up most of my day, but it was well worth it. I was very happy with the new chest layout. Day 138, I commissioned a coop upgrade, then spent almost the entire day in the fire shaft to look for fire geodes. Despite being here all day, I only managed to get 12 of those. Oddly enough, I have found more fossil notes than geodes. While foraging at the beach later, I came across an interesting looking boat next to the lighthouse. Remember that letter I got, like, I don't know, a year ago, where someone told me to meet them by the beach in the evening, which I definitely didn't forget about? Yeah, that's what this is. This is Rafi's Black Market. Well, that's what the wiki description says. She visits Coral Island every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. She sells random items at absurd prices, and from what I know, it's mostly artifacts and fossils. I did actually buy one marble coffer and one fossil note, but yeah, not sure if this was really worth it. On day 139, I immediately went to the blacksmith in the morning, and I did get one new gem to donate. But I am still missing a ruby. I had a look at the new outfits over at the White Flamingo, like this adorable llama suit. Seems a bit unpractical for a farmer though. I purchased this cute crop top for the upcoming summer, then bought a few more indoor and outdoor decorations, and then just ran around the farm for a good while, figuring how I want to decorate further. It is the last day of the season. I checked my handy dandy computer to make sure that I didn't miss any critters or fish, picked up the final harvest, but then was once again occupied in the savannah cave where after a little while I reached floor 100, found another memory fragment. This time the giants are all gathered at the beach. We see Gord performing his magic once again, making a fire to warm the animals around. I just realized while looking at the footage again, Gord and Gio almost look identical, only Gord has a red mask instead of the white one. How did I not notice this before? <laughs> Gord felt overshadowed by his brother who made the fire even bigger and there was even some fireworks coming out of it. And then he kind of just walked away. Sad, I guess. I'm not really sure yet what to make of these cutscenes. After that, I ran around the farm again, 
And that's it for spring. It is summer once again. Instead of preparing the field, I immediately went to the dock in town, where I fished the entire morning in hopes of getting my hands on a great white shark. Alas, I had no such luck. So I returned back to the farm, purchased a whole bunch of summer seeds from the computer, and also three new seedlings for the greenhouse. Dragon fruit, papaya, and jackfruit. After I planted everything, it was back to fishing. First at the estuary, where I caught a cod, and then next to the lighthouse for a raja and shark, and also a squid. For the rest of the evening I was on the lookout for a wolf spider. Didn't manage to find one, but at least I got to level 9 in fishing. Second day of summer, and it is already raining, so you know what that means more fishing. Right next to the farm, I got my hands on a golden gar, and after that I prepared my new coop by crafting another otter feeder and collector. Made my way over to the ranch where I purchased six quails. You heard that correct, six. Melina, Melania, Mikola, Margit, Moog and Melikev. Say that three times in a row, super fast. Now you might be wondering, Sav, why did you take a sudden interest in quails? I'm glad you asked. The day before recording this, I learned that you can actually put quail eggs into preserve jars, turning the eggs into salted eggs. I can then put the salted eggs into aging barrels, turning them into century eggs. Assuming their osmium quality, they sell for a lot more than all of the other artisan products I produce. Which is kinda ridiculous if you ask me. I also learned that you can rename your animal buildings, which is a nice touch. And I named it the Elden Coop. A bit later I visited the carpenter, where I commissioned a third pond. Fished by the river again, where I caught a sturgeon, and for the entire evening and the night, I was looking yet again for a wolf spider. And I really mean the entire night. I don't think I ever stayed up this late. I did came across one spider, but I was too slow to react and escaped, and reached level 9 in catching. Morning on 143, I gave Mr. Wataru and Valentina a birthday present, fished at the docks, where I finally got a great white shark, the apex predator of the ocean. I was trying to get another one for the fish pond that I'm building, but yeah, that wasn't happening. I went over to the museum to donate all the new fish that I've caught and finished the shark collection, which earned me a shark suit, which is slightly terrifying, not gonna lie. I had a look at the aquarium section again, and I love how it looks in here. There's only a handful of fish that I'm missing to finish the entire collection. Since traps were so effective for ocean critters, I crafted a few ground insect traps and placed them in the area where I spotted that one spider yesterday. But I didn't need them after all, since later in the evening I came across another wolf spider and successfully caught it. Next day I went straight over to the blacksmith, where I finally got the last gem for the museum, which was the ruby. With that finished both the fire gem and gem collection. Now I don't have to worry about finding geodes anymore. Also this gave me a really cute chieftain statue, which I put next to the chests. I placed the ampa shark into the newly finished pond, and then spent the rest of my day in the greenhouse, where I planted strawberry and wheat seeds. The wheat is just temporary, so that I can make more beer for Samuro, because for some reason he only loves alcohol. <laughs> I have so much mushroom furniture by now, that I don't really know what to do with, so I decided to decorate the greenhouse with it. This took up most of my day, but I was very happy with the end results. Well, besides those ugly corners where you cannot place grass for some reason. But yeah, I'll be putting more decorations in here in the near future. Day 145 was very uneventful. In the morning I looked for osmium kelp in the ocean, I gave Mayo Connor a pineapple upside down cake for his birthday, and then decorated the farm a bit more. As you can see, I'm a huge fan of grass tiles, and what's really cool is that you can even place buildings and trees on top of the floor tiles. I moved the insect houses to the right side of the farm, and here's a little overview of the layout that I currently have. The following day I was back in the Cave of Memories. This time one of the rewards was Osmium Quality Fertilizer, which is really nice, since I'm always way too lazy to craft that myself. On floor 107 I found my very first treasure room, which took me by surprise. I had no idea that there were treasure rooms in this game. This one had loads of mushrooms and a pink diamond in a chest. And I kid you not, about 5 minutes later I found another treasure room, which had Fen's secret map inside, an actual treasure map. I'm very excited to check that out. And on floor 125, I found the final memory fragment of Gord. We see Gord standing at the entrance of the cave, and some sort of entity is speaking to him, telling him to split his soul to reveal his true power. Of course, makes total sense. Sometime later, we see all the giants gathered at the fire cave entrance, where they try to reason with Gord. He kinda just laughs at them, calls them fools, even saying that Gio is not his twin in a fit of rage. 
rude guy? <laughs> And we already know the rest. Gort splits his soul and, in the process, turns the other giants into stone. Jiu is still trying to stop him and goes after Gort, down into the fire shaft. Well, that was grim. But we finally have all of the memory fragments. At the entrance, I meet up with the other giants and we see as the giant performs his magic on Gort to let him see all of the good memories they have together. Like having wild parties and training together with his friends. Not having to use evil powers to gain more strength. With these joyful memories, Gort returned to us and finally woke up again. The giants were all very happy to see him, we had a group hug, and that's the giant storyline concluded. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it was a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought there was a bit more to it, and the fact that Gort didn't even see a word was a bit disappointing, but let's not linger on it. I picked up my hoe at the farm and then went back to the savannah to look for the hidden treasure. I found it almost instantly and it had a peach sapling inside. I take any free loot that I can get. I called it in early and made a nice chunk of money that day thanks to the abundance of artisan products I've sold. Morning on 147, I got a letter from Gord who thanked me for saving him and in return he gifted me the Tablet of Memories. With this I can rewatch any cutscenes whenever I want to. Honestly, it's a pretty cool reward. I like that. Still doesn't make up for the anticlimactic ending though. After that I went back to the carpenter where I commissioned a stable. I gotta be honest, I kinda forgot that the horse even existed. I doubt that I'm gonna use it, but it's handy to have I guess. Then it was time for a diving session. I was specifically looking for water notes, since I'm only missing one fossil piece to finish the collection. Despite being down here the entire day, I only managed to find four single water notes. But that doesn't matter, because the next day when I opened the fossil notes, I was lucky enough to get the piece that I was missing. The Plesiosaurus skull. I donated it right away, finishing the fossil collection, which earned me a dino suit. Love the geophysics on the snout. So cute. I gave Sam and Agung a birthday present, crafted more aging barrels and kegs, and in the evening finished decorating the greenhouse and also spiced up the area next to my house. 149 was spent grinding for coffers in the savannah cave. And the next day I did the same thing, except this time I was in the ocean caves. I also got another cutscene with Samaru, where we met up at the beach to look for Poseidon. We asked everyone who was around, but still no luck. A bit later we stumbled upon Macy, who was also there, accompanied by a blue lobster, dancing with some crabs. Yep, this is actually Poseidon. Samaru was reluctant to approach Macy and Poseidon, since they seem very happy together, and he doesn't want to disturb them. I didn't like this cutscene at first, but now I can appreciate this a bit more, and I respect his decision. The following morning, I opened all of the coffers that I found yesterday and got the final piece for the artifact collection, which was the ruby hairpin, and we are so close to museum rank A now. I harvested my first blackberry, coffee beans and melons, donated one osmium coffee bean to the rare crop altar, went to the ranch, where I bought myself a horse, which I of course named Roach. I gifted Samaru the hard locket that I purchased from the blacksmith earlier, and we are officially dating now. I spent a few in-game hours trying to catch another great white, which I did thankfully. Back at the farm, I swapped out the Gira Gar for the shark. I don't know how he fits in there, but I'm not gonna question that any further. I visited the desert to trade in some of the harvest at the treasure bubble for more mushroom furniture pieces. I do this pretty frequently, so I won't be mentioning this anymore. I sold my first aged quail eggs today, and it definitely paid off. Look at that, over 8,000 just for two century eggs. That's insane. 152 was the animal festival. I don't really have much to say about this. I saw Macy with Poseidon again, which is kinda cute, not gonna lie. This time I won both the cow and chicken competition, which earned me a bunch of merit points. I also attended the pet race with Fizz, but unfortunately I only got in third place and I didn't really feel like doing it again because this is really tedious with mouse and keyboard. Next morning I checked my handy farm computer again and saw that there is still a butterfly that I haven't catched, which is the crowned hair streak butterfly. I'll be on the lookout for that. As I was collecting my animal products, I had golden milk in one of the auto collectors, as well as a golden egg in the chicken coop. That's pretty fancy. I gave Ava a birthday present and while waiting for Emma to come out of her house, I already managed to find a crowned butterfly. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I handed Emma one green tea because it was also her birthday 
Then went into the deep forest to gather hardwood, and on my way got another ground hair streak butterfly, which I put into the insect house that I wasn't using. The evening was spent running around on the farm, refilling the shed, decided to remove the hardwood trees that I had here since they take up quite a lot of space, and I doubt that I'll ever use this much hardwood anyways. After going to bed, I reached level 10 in foraging. Day 145 to 55 were not that eventful, the highlights being I upgraded my hay quality to osmium, which was also the last upgrade from the lab, I bought all the different sprinkler attachments, which I should have done a lot sooner, because these are actually really handy, I commissioned a second shed, and mostly decorated again, I moved the two insect houses to the former hardwood tree spot, and I think it turned out pretty cozy. I left that the mushroom trees glow at night, it has a really nice vibe. Day 156 was a windy day, and that means I have a chance to catch a blue morpho butterfly, which is also the last summer insect that I'm missing. I gave Sarah a birthday gift, then ran around the lake to look for the butterfly, and luckily found one right away, one step closer to town reg A. After that I visited Frank at his home to gift an osmium quality pepper for his birthday. I'm sorry, but I just have to mention again. The house interior is on a different level in this game. I love everything about this. They even have an own room for the cats. A bit later I found another blue morpho, which I swapped out with the spider since they don't really sell for a lot of money. I commissioned a second silo from the carpenter, bought the automated chest recipe from the lab, I am very excited to test this out since I never used this before. Back at the farm I went in to test it out right away, first time you place it there is even a tutorial that pops up. Though unfortunately I didn't really understand how it works, so I had to look this up quickly, but eventually I figured it out, and I was surprised by how well this actually works. The chests take up a good chunk of the room, so I might even have to build a third shed. We'll just see. Day 157 to 58 was spent looking for osmium kelp and ore to craft more automated chests. And while decorating on 148, I found a Dark Souls and Spongebob reference. You'll have to see it. Next morning I crafted two auto-harvest attachments for the strawberries that I have in the greenhouse. And yes, I know I still have quite a bit of space left in here, I'm waiting for the fall crops for that. I said hello to Dinda, and while there, commissioned a second mill. I doubt that I'm actually gonna use it, but for the sake of symmetry. Plus, the mill is a very cheap building anyways. Today I wanted to try out the hangout mechanic that was also newly introduced with the latest update, though it seems that currently this also works with the townies and not with the merfolk, but at least I can hug my boyfriend. Aww. I built more auto chests and kegs, then just stood there for quite a while looking at the machines. It's very satisfying. Also found out that I can decorate the shed, same as the house, so I spruced it up a bit. And lastly started to prepare the second row of chests, this side will be for aging barrels. On day 160 I found Connor's hat at the beach, which is a quest I got like over a year ago. Oops. Funny enough, Connor is like 10 meters away from where I found it. You couldn't just pick it up yourself, couldn't you? 161 was a gift day. I tried to find most people on the map, both land and merfolk, which also resulted in a whole bunch of cutscenes to trigger, which I'll briefly talk over. First we have Waku who is trying to convince his dad to come with him to the weekly yoga classes, since that would be good for body and mind. He really didn't want it to go, but with my help we managed to persuade him. We see Archie and Ben taking care of Fun Bucket, which is Ben's duck. He has been sick for quite a while and Ben is trying his best to nurse him back to health. And lastly, I was strolling around with Denali, which I think is also the first cutscene that I got with her. She made a new friend that day. Unwillingly, I might add. And later, I was looking for more osmium ore to expand the auto production even further. Morning on the next day, I headed over to the town square, where I met up with the gang once more. First stop was the museum, which now, thankfully, has quite a few items to showcase, thanks to yours truly, of course. Together with Millie, I showed them the local library and animal shelter. Last stop was the little temple building next to the beach where we cleaned up the trash and hung out together. And that was also the last tour of the merfolk expedition quest. The princess thanked me for showing them around and I got a new bed for Fizz. As I was checking on my animals the next day, I noticed that Kiwi had a medal around his neck as well as Misha. Pretty sure this is because they won first prize at the animal festival, which is a very cute detail. I gave Samaru his 50th barley beer, now that he's on land again I can actually invite him to hang out with me, so I can confirm it also works with the merfolk. There's quite a few places where you can choose to go. Since he enjoyed the coffee so much on our first expedition, the cafe was an obvious choice. You get a little cutscene, a few friendship points and sometimes even a temporary buff, which is really cool. And we are so close to 10 hearts with him. I spent most of the day on the farm, where I was once again busy with decorating. 
I fenced in the mills and the silos and started to place flowers and grass at the tree farm. Huge fan of how that looks together. Day 164 was Leah and Anne's birthday, which I provided both with loved items. Had a romantic lunch with Samaru at the taco place, looking for yet again more osmium ore. At this point I was determined to have everything automated. And more decorating outside, where I created this cozy little area next to the sheds. And we're skipping right ahead to day 166. I redecorated the upper floor in the house, I bought a few mermaid furniture pieces, and now it doesn't look so empty up here anymore. I tried my best to also decorate around Roach stable, not too happy with this, but that's the best that I can do. And here's an overview of the almost fully decorated farm. The following day was the beach cleanup festival. I bought the scrap square. I bought the scrap scarecrow from the festival shop because I think that's the only place where you can get it from. Participated in all of the mini games that were available for the free merit points and just had enough points to buy one catching, one fishing elixir, as well as an undead scarecrow. With the elixirs, I unlocked catch and fish price so that I can get even more money from selling critters and fish. 168 was the last day of the season. I collected my final harvest, gave Yuri a lobster for her birthday, because who doesn't love a lobster, and spent most of my day collecting hay to refill the silos and catching bugs. Fall is here and I have a lot to do. First I removed any dead crops from the field, purchased a whole bunch of new seeds, mostly fairy rose, pumpkin, barley, garlic and cactus. Planting everything took up most of the morning, after that I gave Samaru yet again another beer, which bumped me up to 10 hearts finally. I swam to the Naga Palace to hand out more gifts, which triggered a cutscene, where the princess told her parents from our land expeditions. Surprisingly, they were very happy to listen to the reports and told Mira that she's free to go to land whenever she wants to, so that they may learn even more about the landfolk. And that cutscene concludes the Merfolk Chaperone side quest. Back on the farm, I fished at the pond, where I caught a tiger barb. I purchased the last seedling for the greenhouse, which was the lemon seedling, and I decided at this point that I'm going to keep the rest of the space available, in case I need some specific crops for cooking later. In the evening, I fished next to the giant's village, where I caught two giant sea bows, one for the rare fish altar and the other for the museum. Next day, I visited the lab, where I bought the foraging component and the ultimate scarecrow recipe. Then spent quite a while looking for my koala traps underwater. I did find them eventually, which I relocated to the Lima Puro area, in hopes of trapping a cotton candy lobster. In the evening I spotted a tarantula on the beach, which gave me Animal Crossing flashbacks. And not the good ones. After going to bed, I reached level 10 in catching, maxing out our second last skill. 171 came around and I got an interesting letter from Samuro this morning, asking me to meet up at the beach. Intriguing. I really didn't do much that day, the usual farm chores, handed out more gifts, then a bit later I met with Samaru. We played a round of volleyball and got knocked out suddenly. That was a mean throw. I regained consciousness shortly after and Samaru felt really bad about that, but me being the nice farmer, I told him not to worry about it. We confessed our feelings to each other and had our very first kiss. Aww. A memorable first date, for sure. Since we're on fall now, I wanted to have a more fitting outfit, so I visited the white flamingo where I ended up with a farmer shirt and a matching beanie. Later I was checking on my underwater trap where I was happy to see the cotton candy lobster. There's only one ocean creature left to find and that's the white spotted jellyfish, but I had no luck finding one today. When checking the farm computer the next day, I noticed that it also displays underwater critters and forager balls. It took me over half an in-game year to realize this, but better late than never I guess. I gave Eleanor and Raphael a birthday present, waited for nighttime to approach, to resume my search for a spotted jellyfish. This time I found one right away, went to the museum where I donated the tarantula, lobster and jellyfish, earning me the Marine Observer achievement, finishing the Ocean Greater collection. With that, the museum is at rank A now, and we are so close to town rank A as well. For finishing the Sea Greater collection, I got the Seafarer outfit. Once again, another spawn for reference. Love that. Walking out of the house the following morning, I had Oliver at my front door, who told me to come with him since he had a little surprise for me. He led me to his mom, Eleanor. She showed me the tiny eggs from the coral mosaic butterflies, which means her breeding program was a success. I love Eleanor so much. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but she's one of my favorite characters. Mayor Connor sent me a letter reminding me of the upcoming Harvest Festival, already looking forward to that. I proposed to Samaru with a massive diamond ring I bought earlier, and he of course accepted it. 
The ceremony will be held on the 8th of fall, which is in 3 days from now on. I handed Cho Ui one fire quartz for a big day, then stood around the farm waiting for night time again. I am still missing a rove beetle for the museum, and so far I haven't had any luck finding another one. And I also didn't find one today, unfortunately. While handing out gifts on day 174, I saw that there was a shop in the Band of Smiles lair. I haven't mentioned this before, but to quickly summarize, the Band of Smiles, or BOS in short, is kinda like the Adventure Guild. Kira is the leader, Mark is also part of the group, and then there's a few non-giftable NPCs that are also in the gang, like Geo. I haven't talked about this before because it's not relevant, like, ever. The shop offers a bunch of different rings and so so many weapons. I bought the one wellness fruit and decided to switch out the sword with the keeper's hammer, which does way more damage than the flame guard sword. And I'm hoping that this might encourage me a bit more to level up my combat skill, since that's still only at level 7. Kenny congratulated me on getting engaged. In fact, most people I spoke with today had something to say about the wedding, even the kids, which is a very nice detail. On 175, I got my very first garlic harvest. Luckily, I got two osmium quality ones, which is the last crop that I was missing for the rare crops bundle, thus completing the rare altar. This triggered another cutscene with the goddess. She congratulated me on finishing the altar and gifted me a seed bag, which houses a creature from a mythical realm. I can plant the seedling on the farm, and if I take good care of it, it will sprout into a mythical creature. Sounds a bit ominous, but also exciting. Finishing the altar gave me another tier 3 sprinkler, unlocked a new crafting recipe, but more importantly, we are officially at town rank A. I cannot even explain to you how relieved I was in that moment. I thought I'd have to wait another season so that I can finish the last altar. Thankfully, that was not the case. The game just got so much more interesting. I currently don't have any free space on the farm, so the seedling will have to wait a bit. Millie sent me a letter letting me know that there's once again new books at the library as well as from Jeff Smith, who gave me a key so that I can access the cellar next to my house. Ooh. Down there was some free machines for me to pick up. I already have the two sheds, so I doubt that I'll ever use this space, but who knows. I also noticed that the room is divided in two sections, but it seems like that's not available in the current state of the game. As if the day couldn't get any better, I found a second row of beetle in one of my traps. One step closer to finishing the museum, after that I commissioned a final house upgrade from the carpenter, and also changed the style of my house. I think that this fits the whole farm aesthetic way more. Had a look at the new clothing items at the White Flamingo, and purchased a wedding dress for the ceremony tomorrow. I headed to bed pretty early, because I didn't feel like doing anything else, and upon going to bed, I had a weird cutscene with Pufferfish. The roots have completely taken over the building, and Karen ordered her employees to evacuate the building. Waking up the following day, I was in the barracks at the Murfolk Kingdom, and that's when I realized that the ceremony is of course underwater, <laughs> which means that I cannot put on the dress I bought yesterday. Oops. The wedding takes place at the nearby Colosseum, and as far as I can see, everyone in the kingdom is present here today, even the king and the queen. I love that Cho Ui even has a different outfit, just for the ceremony. We said our vows to each other and tied the knot that day. And from now on, Samurai is going to live in the house with me and Fizz. Aren't we adorable? Checking upstairs, I noticed that the door is finally open, and I believe this is his spouse room? It's interesting, I guess? Let's just not talk about it. I harvested my barley seeds, saw that I have access to all seasonal seeds at the computer, very handy, planted that mythical seed along with some beads, and in town I found Mayor Connor next to the Pufferfish building and we watched as everyone started to move out their belongings. Karen mentioned that they have no other choice than to leave, and I agree, be gone with you. No mayor title for you, Karen. Connor mentioned that there will be an official ceremony for reaching town rank A, which I am very much looking forward to. I didn't really have anything else to do, so I decided to go to the mines to look for my orders. On day number 178, I woke up in a bigger house. Well, not really. There's two new doors upstairs now that will become available once you have children. I harvested the rest of the garlic crops and replanted some cranberry seeds, gave the princess and her mother a pink diamond for their birthdays, and then mostly spent the day on the farm. The shed is fully automated by now, one row with kegs and the other with aging barrels. I do kinda want to automate the second shed as well, but grinding for osmium ore is really boring and tedious, so yeah, not sure if I'm gonna do that. Day 179, I learned that I can befriend and gift the giants like any other town folk. 
I'm not sure if this has any actual benefits, but I'll make sure to talk with them more often from now on. The following day I received a letter from Connor who asked me to come to the community center for an important announcement. Before doing that, I harvested my first pumpkin and cactus, crafted two auto attachments for the sprinklers, which will plant the seeds I put in there automatically, because I am tired of doing that myself all the time. Very satisfying to look at. After doing my daily chores, I headed over to the community center, but no cutscene triggered. I waited a few hours and checked again later, but still nothing happened, so I might have to wait with that for another day. Since it is raining today, I have the opportunity to catch an eastern black swallowtail, and thankfully I found one right next to my farm. I went to the museum where I donated both the swallowtail and the rolf beetle, which were the last two critters to catch, finishing the bug collection and earning the bug fancier achievement. As a reward, I get another bodysuit. This time, it's a moth. Might be a good costume for this year's spooky festival. On 181, I got the community center cutscene with Connor. He thanked me for helping the town, which I really appreciate, at least someone acknowledging my hard work. Well, besides the goddess, I mean. The whole community gathered inside the building. Judge Rose was also here to officially announce the new town rank. And we celebrated outside with music and fireworks. Back at the farm, I saw that I had a new letter from the king, inviting me over to the Naga Palace for an important discussion, and thus finally starting the Resupply Murfolk Palace questline. I of course immediately headed over, where the king, queen and Cho Ui and I had a talk about the current state of the food supplies for the kingdom. Apparently they get their deliveries far off the ocean and they want to change that. The king says that I am a skilled farmer and believes that I can help them out. Cho Ui led me to the new farming plot, which is of course the underwater farm. After three in-game seasons, we are finally here. Same as always, it's a bit run down at the moment, but I'll clean everything up in no time. So to explain the underwater farm quickly, right now I can only craft underwater crops myself using this machine right here. The seeds require three different kinds of materials. Land crops or flowers, ocean forage and kelp. I can only buy ocean seeds from the store once I shipped 50 of one type of crop. Since we're underwater, I don't need to use the watering can, instead Cho Ui hands me the Lumina wand, so that I can provide light for the crops. The farmland comes with a tiny house for me to sleep in and decorate, as well as a new fast travel point on the map. I started to clear out a bit of space, then crafted my first underwater crops. Labu, Marinib, Spring Sea Leaf, Pink Coral Cap and Bluebell Blossom Seeds. This is the only thing about the underwater farm that I knew beforehand, that you need quite a few ocean forageables, so I already had a good amount saved up to get started on the new farm right away. I planted all of the seeds and tested out the Lumina wand for the first time. I really hope that I can upgrade this in the future, because dear god, this thing is slow. Really slow. After that I checked out the underwater shop for outdoor and indoor decorations, and there is a fully themed Spongebob decoration set. You know what I gotta do. I have so much money at this point that I don't know what to do with, so I bought everything there is and redecorated my tiny new farmhouse. And I love it. Checking the store later again, I saw that there's even a matching set for the outdoor area, which is something that I might do another day. 182 was a Sunday, and also Bree's birthday, whom I gifted an osmium quality jackfruit. Tended to my ocean crops, saw that there's now also errands for the merfolk, which is gonna help a lot to befriend everyone. Commissioned my first on the water barn, which is absolutely massive, by the way. Now I understand why the farm plot is so big. And then spent more time clearing out trash and seaweed. The next morning I bought a few iris and red cabbage seeds, since these are the only crops that I don't have, in order to make other ocean crops. And now I was also very happy that I still have some space left in the greenhouse, since these are both summer crops. I teleported to the underwater farm, where I didn't have to use my Lumina wand that day, and I assume that's because it's sunny weather, but I'm not sure. Then just waited for the harvest festival to start. I demolished everyone at the pumpkin smashing minigame, bought a few mooncakes from the festival store, and left the samurais attending the event as well. And then it was time for the display contest. I was just as excited as last year for this. I brought some of my best products. Everything is osmium quality, except the golden egg, but that should still be more than enough for a win. Bobby is shivering in his boots right now. This loser has no chance. And sure enough, I won. Bobby was once again shocked, which is funny considering he brought the same items as last year. Unfortunately, it was not enough for the stamina fruit. I was missing like 5 points, so that's a bummer. But at least I got a new ring and more mooncakes. On day 184, I got another cutscene at the community center, 
Mayor Connor talks about how they want to make the town more attractive for tourists. And this is where we get introduced to the attractions. Millie and Connor explained that the next goal is to reach town rank S. That's right, there is another town rank that we can achieve. Some attractions will only provide new decorations around town, and others are a bit more useful, like the hot air balloon, which unlocks a new hangout spot. The same goes for the ramen restaurant and the recreation center, which also transforms the old rundown pufferfish building. But firstly, I want to focus on the junior upcyclers, because this unlocks the recycling center and that sounds the most interesting to me right now. For that I only need a bit of scrap, trash and resin. So I picked everything up and donated it to the attraction board. Construction will start tomorrow and it will take 5 days to finish. This is when I realized that attractions have an own rank in the menu as well. Lots of things to do in the future. I gave Luke a stew for his birthday, which I found weeks ago in the mines. Hope you enjoy, buddy. Admired my newly finished underwater barn. I wanted to buy my first animals as well, but I wasn't allowed to do that yet. It says I need to finish the Dua Pulu offering to be able to buy a carapool tree. But at this point, I haven't even seen any of the new offerings, so I guess I'll have to wait a bit again. As I was tending to my crops, I noticed that a plant was missing. Are there underwater crows, perhaps? So I placed a few scarecrows around the field. I was gathering more ocean forageables in order to craft more seeds when I came across Mola, the sad looking fish from the first video. And to my surprise, I could actually understand what she was saying to me. That's new. I was intrigued and wanted to know if I can also talk with our monkey friend from the forest, but unfortunately that is not the case, so no idea what that's about. The following day I harvested my first ocean crops, which was the Marinib. I shipped two of them and decided to save the rest. I was handing out gifts at the merfolk when I noticed that Cho Ui's shop got expanded and thank god I can upgrade the Lumina wand. There's even underwater sprinklers and their own attachments, as well as a seaweed and underwater crop quality improvement. Very nice. I already had everything that I needed to be able to fully upgrade the Lumina wand and that's exactly what I did, all the way to osmium quality. I enchanted it over at the giant's village and it has a much bigger radius now. That's gonna help out a lot in the future. I crafted a few other seeds expanded the field and planted everything. On 186, I delivered all the materials for the solar garden project. This one has the sustainability improvement perk, and I'm curious to see if this is gonna affect my farm somehow. As I was checking up on the underwater farm, I had Orlan at my front door, who is also the person to pick up the ocean crops whenever I ship something. He let me know that the king is ready to test my first harvest. Before heading to the palace, I had another harvest ready, which was for the twin shade sea leaf. After that, Olaan prepared the meal for the royal family and his majesty was ecstatic. Of course the crops were of exceptional quality, thank you very much. The queen ordered me to visit the general store for further instructions, which I did right away. Todi was already waiting for me, who is also the shop owner. He explained to me that in order to buy ocean crops at the shop, I need to first ship a certain amount of crops. I already knew that, but thanks I guess. The resupply merfolk quest got updated and I now have to ship a total of a thousand crops. This is gonna take a while since crops are also used for the underwater upgrades. So I crafted a bunch of more seeds, planted them and then just chilled around the farm for the rest of the day. Upon visiting the kingdom on day 187, I had a cutscene with Cho Ui, who congratulated me on my first ocean crop harvest. She also urged me to explore the orchestra points, which are the key to upgrade my Lumina wand. But I already have a fully upgraded Lumina wand, so I just said that I am slightly confused. She showed me the first orchestra. These are scattered around the ocean and used to play lovely melodies, and now they're broken and it is my task to repair them. I mean, who else I guess? Starting the song of the sea quest line for improving the ocean rank. Simply put, orchestra points are the same as offerings, just with kelp essence and ocean crops. The first one seems simple enough, and I already had almost everything that I need to finish it right off the bat, but I still have to wait for the bluebell blossom. While giving Randy a cup of coffee for his birthday, I saw that him and the kids are already working on the upcoming town attraction, as well as Derek and his construction crew setting up the new solar garden. This reminds me a lot about my time at Sandrock, where you can gradually see the town change over time. While running around, I get another cutscene, this time with the goddess. She showed me an old mural on the wall and said it is my responsibility to improve the heritage to rank S. There's four separate pieces of the moral that I can recover. Before leaving, she gave me the ability to speak with so-called guardians, and I knew immediately this has to be related to our orangutan friend. The guardian moral is, once again, another donation altar. But first, I have to find and speak with each of the guardians. Four guardians, four riddles. The two middle ones are fairly easy. King Tan and the panda we've came across last year. So I made my way over to the bamboo forest, and sure enough, there he is. 
and I can finally understand what he's saying. The panda was very surprised when I spoke back to him. In fact, he was so shocked that he fell out of the tree. Very panda-like. They do tend to fall off trees. I briefly explained the situation to him, that I come on behalf of the goddess, and that I need his piece of the moral in order to restore the whole set. The panda said that I have to first prove myself, and only then will he give me his piece. Fair enough. His side of the altar is now unlocked, and it is of course cooking related. My favorite activity. Next up is our monkey friend. We already know that his name is King Tan, and same as the panda, he is willing to give up his piece of the moral, but only if we can provide the items that he wants. The items he requested seem relatively simple, or so I thought. Back at the farm I checked my cooking recipes, and I already have the recipe for two of the four cooked items, being the herb tempeh and jackfruit casserole. Luckily, cooking in Coral Island isn't that bad. You can cook any dish without actually needing the recipe. You just need the right ingredients and kitchen supplies. Once you cook it manually and were successful, you unlock the recipe permanently. It's a really neat mechanic that doesn't force you to have maximum friendship points with the 300 different NPCs, and I hope to see this more in games in the future. I spent the rest of the day preparing ingredients for cooking, like making gourmet salt and gathering bamboo shoots. Next day, I gave Ricey a birthday present, made almost all of the cooked dishes for the Guardian Moral, Herb Tempe, Jackfruit Casserole, Popia, and S. Dodger. I need four of each items, and I was missing one milk to make another S. Dodger. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. So I'll have to wait until tomorrow. While browsing my computer, I saw an animal whistle for sale, which I purchased, and just as I thought, it teleports the horse to your side. So now I might actually use it. I also bought one diving and one foraging elixir. Then had a look at the moral again, and I read the riddle next to the panda. And I knew instantly that this has to be where we saw those ranch animals in the savannah. Perfect time to try out the new animal whistle. The horse is incredibly fast, and the savannah is a quite large area, so I feel like this is the only place where it's actually useful to have. Upon arriving at the ranch, I got introduced to Lady Lavana, another guardian. I thought she was a jaguar at first, but according to the wiki, she is in fact a leopard. Once again, we explained that we're here for the peace of the moral, the goddess sent us, etc, etc. Opening up the third guardian altar. Before checking that out, I saw that the lady has her own shop and I can finally purchase an ostrich and buffaloes. Everyone, please welcome Mesmer and Midra, my two new bird friends. For the buffaloes, I'll have to wait a bit because I first need to make some room in my barns. She also has outdoor and indoor furniture pieces available, all mushroom themed. If I knew that sooner, I would have waited a bit with decorating my farm. And lastly, an option for a race. Well, now I'm definitely glad that I bought the horse. Racing against her is a bit like Mario Kart, where you have different perks on the ground that can either boost your speed or make you slower. I lost the first time, but won the second attempt, since the track remains the same. Winning against her actually gives you a discount for the entire shop for the remaining day. On my way home, I stopped by the mural to look at the items that she wants. Theoretically, nothing too complicated, it's mostly animal products from both the ostrich and the buffalo. Both my barn buildings are completely full, and I really don't want to build a third one, so I decided to sell Waluigi and Wario, my two pigs. Since I still have two pigs in the other building. I knew it sucks, but like I said, building another barn would take a lot of time and space, which I don't really have anymore on the farm. Went back to the savannah, where I bought two buffaloes. The discount also applies to her livestock. 35,000 instead of 44,000 is kinda crazy. Now all I have to do is wait for them to produce. After that I went to the museum, where I had a chat with Scott, Millie and Lily, who were setting up a new device for the dino area. This is where we get introduced to dino holograms, where we need those dino prints I found in the Cave of Memories, so we can bring the museum also up to rank S. There's 10 holograms in total. Same as the town attraction, each project has its own construction progress. One hologram has already been finished, and it's up to me to complete the rest of them. I already have enough prints for the Velociraptor one, but I haven't figured out where to get the rings to start construction, so I'll come back to that another time. On 189, I harvested my first Bluebell Blossom, which let me finish the Pulu Orchestra. I had to solve a riddle, which was very easy, and I played the Song of the Sea for the first time. All the ocean animals around gathered at the newly repaired orchestra, and I now have access to the second one, which is located in the 20 meter depths. Conveniently, this one is right next to my underwater farm. 
I crafted the necessary seeds, planted them, made another as dodger, and learned that cooked items need to have the same quality level in order to donate them. I have one bronze and one silver quality one, and I really hope this is a bug that gets fixed soon, because that's slightly irritating. Have to try again tomorrow. By now I had all the necessary materials for the ramen shop funding. The hardwood, solar panels, amaranth and wheat flour, which will unlock a new hangout spot once it's built. The rest of the day was spent in the savannah cave to start grinding for those dino prints. The following morning I made another s -Dodger. This time it was thankfully silver quality, so I was able to finish my very first guardian offering. Oddly enough, I thought that the cooking one would take way longer, but it turned out to be pretty easy. Heritage is now also at rank A. The outfit that I got is cute, but not really my style. In town I had a look at the finished Shola garden as well as the new recycling center, where I can put trash in to get different rewards and even new shed skins. It needs a lot of trash. Like, I mean, a lot of trash. I brought half of the stacks I had over, only to get two rewards. It's a bit disappointing, because you can almost buy all of the rewards from the computer, which are pufferfish furniture pieces. I spent a good chunk of my day fishing at the river in the savanna for a Red King Aruana. I could have done this a lot sooner, because the savanna has quite a few rare fish spawns all year round. Didn't find what I was looking for today though. On 198, I realized there's still a guardian that I haven't talked to, so I went over to the altar to read the last riddle. This took me a few minutes, but I realized this can only be the temple structure next to the ranch where I tried to interact with a while ago. Sure enough, upon arriving, I could enter and inside the temple was Master Slime waiting for me. Okay, Terraria guy? He does look kinda cute though. Same old, same old, we're explained, we're here for his moral piece. And we have to complete his request, you know how it goes. Also finally realized that these red flowers are new fast trial points for each of the guardians. Upon looking at the Master of Slime Altar, everything seems rather easy to get, so I made that my task of the day. The backpack I remember seeing at the monkey store, the computer just required me to craft another farm computer, the hoarder ring was bought from the Band of Smiles store as well as some illuminating rings for the dinosaur holograms. And I already had plenty of artifacts and fossils at home. I brought everything to the altar and donated the items. Second mural completed. Easy peasy. This rewarded me with the Master of Slime outfit, and honestly, I kinda like it. I might keep this on for a little while. Later I fished at the river again and I got my hands on a Red King Aruana. Now, I thought that this was the last fish that I was missing for the fish collection. I was wrong. Thankfully, the journal tells you which items you already donated, and I noticed that I am missing an Asian sheep head for the museum. This fish spawns during winter, so I just have to wait a few days for that. While doing my usual farm chores the next day, I noticed that my mythical seed was done growing, obtaining my first mythical pet. Look at him, he's so cute! I decided to name him Potato, because he reminds me of one, and I love potatoes. As far as I'm concerned, mythical pets are not any different from regular pets, so he'll just be running around the farm, just as Fizz. Also, he counts as an actual family member. <laughs> the red cabbage was done, and I replaced them with chart seeds. Donated the necessary materials for the hot air balloon attraction, then scavenged for ocean forage to craft more underwater seeds. On day 193, I gave Soraya and Dipper a birthday present, commissioned my second dino hologram, which was for the Velocir Velociraptor, then spent the whole day in the Cave of Memories to look for more dino prints. I also focused more on slaying all the enemies on each floor. My hard work paid off, since I found quite a few of the prints, even some from the new species I haven't had. After going to bed, I reached level 8 in combat, unlocking the Slime of Transmission crafting recipe. This will come in handy a bit later. Next day, I had everything ready for the Duo Puru Orchestra. For finishing this one, I am finally allowed to purchase my first underwater animals, which I did of course. One carapult tree named Crash, and one Murmu named Eddie. Since I had spare machines, I also placed an auto pattern and collector. I have no idea if these machines work underwater, so we'll just have to see tomorrow what happens. I had a quick look at the new Open Up Empapulo Orchestra, started the Recreation Center project, which will turn the old Pufferfish building into a new hangout spot. Then I was occupied placing flooring underneath my two sheds, which took me quite some time, since I don't have much space on the farm left to move around buildings. But thanks to the architect table, I got there eventually and I am officially done with decorating the farm. In hindsight, I could have also put grass flooring where the animal buildings are, but I kind of forgot about that. 
195 is upon us and I collected my first large buffalo milk. I need a total of 8 as well as 8 large ostrich eggs, so it's gonna take some time until I have all of that. I crafted 2 more slime of replication because I learned that I can actually put dino prints in there, which will help tremendously with the dino holograms for the museum, since you need 5 of each print for one skeleton. By now I had enough ocean crops saved up to unlock the first tier of Lumina sprinklers. Thankfully you only need the crops to buy the recipe, crafting them doesn't require any. I donated the prints for both the Galimimus and Stegosaurus holograms, then handed out gifts to the townies. With the few merit points that I had, I bought the Humpty and Frankenstein Scarecrow from the online shop, collected my first Cora egg and Mermo milk, then I was back at the mines to look for ore again, stopping by the monkey store where I bought another blob backpack since it fits nicely with my outfit. Speaking about outfits, later it was time for the spooky festival. This time I was properly dressed for the occasion. Scott even complimented me on my costume. Thanks man. I purchased the Kunti and Pocky Ghost Scarecrow from the shop, participated in the minigames and enjoyed the parade once again. First day of winter, there's no new seeds available, so it's just the same as last year. Tea leaves, snowdrop and cotton. Had a look at the brand new ramen shop with Semaru, very cozy inside, and we also have new cooked dishes that we can purchase in here. I crafted a second Lumina sprinkler for the underwater farm, fished up a second Asian sheep head later. I don't know why I didn't donate it right away, I guess I still thought I was missing another fish. I'll do it eventually though. Winter the second was Raj's birthday, and I gave him my finest osmium quality aged coffee, which I thought for sure was a loved item. It's a liked item. Donated the mammoth and mosasaurus prints, then I had to make some space in the greenhouse by removing the lemon seedling. So if we take a look at King Ton's altar again, he wants to have durian and mangosteen jam, as well as osmium mangoes and lychees. The lychees I already have, but everything else, not so much. Durian grows in spring and mango tree only in summer, so that's why I decided to plant a mango tree in a greenhouse. It's gonna take a whole season to grow, which means I cannot finish the mural this year, which is kinda unfortunate. I really didn't think that this would be so problematic. Oh well. Better late than never. On 199, I had a look at the new hologram in the museum, as well as the hot air balloon, which I of course tested out together with my husband. One seafood ramen for Millie, then decorated the underwater form a bit. Next day, I brought over all the items for the town mural project, which will be contracted by our local artist, Dipper, and crafted more Lumina sprinklers. After going to bed that day, I had a strange cutscene where we see Mayor Connor in his office when suddenly Raina showed up. She formerly worked for Pufferfish, don't know if I mentioned this yet, who wanted to have a chat with Connor, but we don't get to see what they're talking about. Ominous. Most of the day was spent underwater, looking for ocean forage. By the way, I had to remove the auto pedal from the barn, it doesn't seem to work, which is unfortunate. By now I had enough animal products to upgrade the sea quality for the first time. 202 was a glorious day. It is finally snowing. I went down to the pier where I caught a second yellowfin tuna. I grabbed the Asian sheep head and on my way to the museum I got a cutscene again. Everyone is gathered around the former pufferfish building for the grand opening of the new recreation center. Inside we see Reina again, who turns out is the new manager of the building. So that's what they were discussing yesterday. People had mixed feelings about Reina working here, which I can understand. I also had my share to say and asked why she decided to come back to the island. She said that she wants to change her life and feels like Star Town is the place for that. Can't argue with that. More importantly, Eva has her own bakery now. She's been working at the general store where she used to have a small section to bake and now she has her very own place. I love that. Also can we talk about how cozy the building is? Reina spoke about the possibility to have a theater, mini golf and arcade in here. Curious if this is something that I can already do or will be introduced in a future update. This also makes me wonder if Reyna is gonna be another romance option in future updates. Right now she's not even a giftable NPC. Back at the museum I donated the sheep head, getting the fishing mania and part-time curator for finishing the museum collection. The last museum reward is a magical unicorn suit and for finishing the fishing collection I get an octopus suit, which might be a reference to Octodad. Probably not, but I like to think it is. And lastly, I went to the lake temple where I finished the saltwater fish offering by donating the tuna, thus completing the catch altar, which was the last out of the four. Next morning, I brought the items to the community center for the last attraction. Or so I thought. There is indeed a cinema that I can fund. Very cool. 
Before focusing on that, I started construction on the inheated swimming pool. While checking out the new dino holograms, I saw that I can actually get rewards for finishing each of them, in the form of animal costumes. Now, I have a tiny raptor in my coop. Each dino suit even has their own sound design. On 204, I had several birthdays to take care of. Waku, Zoe and Erika. I was feeling a bit chilly by now, so it's time for some new drip. And that might actually be my favorite outfit I've created so far. Definitely something I'd wear myself. By now I shipped enough ocean crops to unlock the first seeds at the general store, which is the gold claw. This one takes a long time to grow, but it can be harvested four times, so it's a good choice for the merfolk shipping quest. 205 came around and I moved the underwater barn to make more space for future crop fields. Upgraded the seed quality to bronze, then bought the mermaid scarecrow from the monkey shop. By far the most expensive item I got so far, but it was worth it. I cannot have an underwater farm and not have that. It fits so well down here. Thanks to all of the slime of replication machines, I have enough dino prints to fund the next hologram. For the plesiosaurus. Day 206 was the first cotton harvest of the season. I had to remove the auto collector from the underwater barn as well. While it did collect items, for some reason I couldn't access it. It was only able to pick up the machine because I moved the building before. So it seems that most automated items are currently a bit buggy for the underwater barn, which is a shame. I gave Noah a birthday meal and then was once again occupied decorating the underwater farm. Which continued the next day. I had enough crops now to purchase the second tier of sprinklers, which I did. I started to lay out a second field and crafted more seeds. On day 208, I started the hologram construction for the Triceratops, leaving only two more dinos left to finish, being the Brontosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. Next morning I accumulated all the crops for the next orchestra, gold kelp essence, pink coral cap, Petaria and reef bud. This unlocked the last orchestra point, which was in the Empapulu area. Surprisingly, this also had animal products for a request this time, being the Mermo cheese. I do wonder how that would taste. Finishing the last orchestra meant that I have finally access to some more underwater animals. Despite the owner clearly attending to his shop, apparently it wasn't open today. Guess I'll come back tomorrow. Green tea for Betty, and another attraction started. This time for the Coral Cinema. Next day, I headed straight to the underwater ranch, where I bought a sea shroud named Axel, because he reminds me of an Axel wobble, and an incog named Hank. Leaving only one animal left, which is the Shellac. For that, however, I need to first finish the other orchestra. At this point, I thought I could finally upgrade my underwater barn, and after a quick google, it seems like this is not possible yet. So in order to fit all animals, I had to commission a second one, which I probably would have done either way anyways. 211 was a gift day. I checked out the new outdoor swimming pool at the inn. Weirdly enough, this does not count as a new hangout spot. Attractions are now at rank A as well. I donated the last two dino prints to the museum, then spent more time decorating the underwater farm, with fences and coral props. After going to bed that day, I gave birth. Didn't even know I was pregnant. I named the little girl Jessica, and now we can see the new rooms upstairs. They fit really nicely with the mermaid theme I have. 213 was mostly spent on the underwater farm, crafting more sprinklers, figuring out how I want to lay out everything, moving the barn again, and in the evening it was time for the winter fair, which is the perfect place to hand out more gifts. I played a round of ice curling, magnet fishing and shooting for the free merit points. And we're skipping ahead to 216. I spent the last few days moving my underwater buildings so that I can finally lay out a proper path with fences. I visited the community center where I had a new attraction that I can fund, which is the mini golf track. The items were nothing too complicated, so I started construction right away. I had two new seats unlocked at the Merfolk General Store, Soka and Betalia. I won't be mentioning this anymore, since it's not really important to the story. By day 217, I was done decorating the underwater farm, for now at least. In the evening, I collected the last Mermo cheese wheel, which I donated to the orchestra, along with the other necessary items, thus completing all four orchestra sites, which can now play the Song of the Sea once again. Don't ask me what the Song of the Sea is, I have no idea. My reward for this is a crafting recipe for a weather conch. As the name suggests, it lets me control the weather of the following day. I can even choose which exact weather conditions I want. That would have been useful if I was still looking for critters or fish. Now, not so much. At least it looks pretty. The next morning, I noticed that the ocean rank is now at S, the first one to reach that goal. Completing the Song of the Sea meant that I have now access to the Shellac, and I bought all four of them. Shelly, Sheldon, Shane and Shannon. 
Look, I'm out of names at this point. Completing the second personal that I had, which was to purchase one of each of the new underwater ranch animals. I upgraded my sea quality to silver, then just smooched around the farm for a little while. On day 219, I bought the auto trash collector and temperature machine recipe from the lab. I didn't really care before to buy the trash collector because I heard it's not that great, but I wanted to have all the different recipes that are available to me currently. I placed it next to the underwater farm and I guess we'll just see if it's really as bad as everyone says it is. I decided to expand the crop field even further since I don't really know what else to do with the space down here and I need a lot of crops for the merfolk request anyways. 220 was Archie's and Nina's birthday. Had a stroll inside the museum where I looked at all the newly finished holograms. Reminds me a lot about Night in the Museum. Completing all the holograms bumped the museum rank to S as well, one step closer to the next town rank. Over the past couple of weeks I've been hoarding animal products and by now I had everything ready for Lady Lavana's offerings. Four large buffalo milk, fermented buffalo cheese, century ostrich eggs and ostrich mayo. The lady held up her end of the bargain and placed her moral next to the others, leaving only one left, which is King Tons. Still quite a bit away from finishing that though. Today was a lazy day. I checked out the new cinema at the recreation center together with Semaru at like 8 in the morning, because why not? Upgraded my crop quality to gold and that's about it. The mini golf was done on 222, which means there's only one attraction left that I can fund, which is the arcade center. I feel like they could raise the construction money as well as have more materials for each of the project. So far I had almost no issue with any of these. Considering that this is late game content, it should be a bit more challenging in my opinion. After that I spent the day on the underwater farm where I decided to expand the field one more time. Can never have too many ocean crops. By now I'm pretty much done with decorating and I'm quite happy how it turned out. Suki and Alice both got a smoothie for their birthday, crafted and planted more ocean seeds, and we finally arrive at the last day of the season. I harvested any remaining crops, checked up on my animals, and same as last year, chilled in the hot springs until the festival starts. I chatted with everyone, tried my luck at the spinning wheel, and enjoyed the fireworks together with my husband and the rest of Starlet Town. But you don't think I was gonna leave it here, did you? So I was thinking a little bit and since we're so close to town rank S, I decided to play a bit more. Bonus month! Yay! And we pick up right at the start of the new year on spring the 1st. So let's take a look at what we're missing. The only attraction that is missing is the arcade, which is already being constructed. Then we have the guardian offerings. The lychees are already there. The durian tree will grow now during spring, as well as the mango tree I have in a greenhouse. And the mangosteen is a spring forage that I just need to find around the island. And that should be it. Today I didn't have any luck with foraging, but I did get three mangoes from the greenhouse. The next day I found four mangosteen right next to the farm, also got some new spring drip. On day 228 the arcade center was done, which means we funded every single attraction, completing the main quest for that and bringing the attraction to rank S. The following day I collected the first durian of the season. By the way, whenever I have an item that is not osmium quality, I can use the slime of transmission to pump up the quality of any product. This machine is heavily underrated and it saved me multiple days of playing, so don't sleep on it. I put the mangosteen and durian into preserve jars to make the jam and now I just have to wait for the mangoes. Unlike in Stardew, fruit trees in Coral Island only produce every four days. So see you in a second. One eternity later. And that brings us to day 238, I think. The past couple of days was also working on shipping a thousand crops for the Merfolk storyline, which is now also completed. Finally, I had everything ready for King Town's offering, eight durian and mangosteen jam and the eight mangoes. Completing the mural, the goddess showed up again and thanked me for my hard work. The outfits that I get are once again adorable. Love the one from King Town especially. At the town square, everyone was already preparing for the upcoming ceremony. Not sure if this is a bug, but the ceremony happened the same day, even though Betty told me that it's supposed to be tomorrow. Something that I really like about this game is that everyone acknowledges your hard work and thanks you for helping the town. Thanks, Connor. Appreciate it, man. I was even allowed to cut the ribbon at the ceremony. And we are officially at town rank S. Like I mentioned before, this is the last town rank currently in the game. You don't really get much for it, just a few new books at the library and a whole lot of merit points. So I'm excited to see what the devs will add in the future. 
And that concludes my second year plus half of spring in year 3 on Coral Island. I know that the ending was maybe a bit anticlimactic, but I didn't think it was worth doing another video just for the few things that we were missing. Sure, I could have worked on a few more achievements, like cooking every recipe, getting every person up to max hearts, I think there's even one for buying a certain amount of clothes, but I didn't really feel like doing that. The game still has some bugs here and there, and I hope they're gonna fix that soon, and I'm of course gonna come back once there's a bigger update again. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Currently, I don't have any bigger projects planned on the channel, so if you know of any cozy games that you would like to see, or would be great for another 100 days video, then please let me know in the comments down below, I love reading them. And again, thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video.